Good day Grade 11s, welcome to week 22. In this lesson we're going to be revising our total surface area and we're revising basically everything that you learned last year. So let's get started straight away. Now total surface area remember is just the area of the total outer area of your prism or cube or whatever we have. And remember we said that it is sometimes easier for you guys to work out the total surface area if we basically think of cutting this up into what is called the object's net. It's called a net. And what it means is that we can actually break this up into different parts. So for example, this bit here, the top over here, would be either this bit here. These are the sides, okay. This is the front, which is this front bit here. That, that actually the top is the same as the bottom, so therefore it doesn't matter which side we had it on. And the front is the same as the back, so it doesn't matter which side we're looking at. So then you can see that all of these shapes are rectangles. And we know that the area, the area of a rectangle is what? It is just length times breadth. So then all that we're going to do is we're just going to add up the areas here. So we're going to work out the area of each of these and then add them up. So in this case we would have um, the first one, the green line is 10 and the purple line is 6. So we'd have this front bit here, so it would be 10 times 6, 10 times 6 plus, so that's the front done, the top or the bottom, whichever you want to think about it, is 10 times 5, so that is 10 times 5, plus, so that's done, the front is the same as the back, so therefore that's another 10 times 6, okay, and the top and the bottom are the same as well, so again that is 10 times 5, and then we just got our two sides, so it's plus 5 times 6, plus 5 times 6. And I've done it like this, so that you can see that we've got how many sides, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, which is perfectly correct because for prism, rectangular prism, we should be having 6 sides. Another way that you could have written this was just that we got 2 times 10 times 6, so we've got two of the front and back, plus two times the top and the bottom, which would have been 10 times 5, plus two times the sides, which is 5 times 6. So this becomes 2 times by 60, plus 2 times by 50, plus 2 times by 30, which becomes 120, plus 100, plus 60, which becomes 280 units squared. In this case, the units are meters, so therefore it becomes 280 meters squared. Now, grade 11, you might be wondering why we are doing something as basic as this, but you'll be using it in things like your geometry, you'll be using it in your, um, possibly in your calculus, so it is useful and it is important. Right, let's do the next prism. This prism is a cube, so all that we've done with this is we've taken your rectangular prism and we've made sure that all the sides are equal in length. So in this case, do you agree that what do we have? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Six sides, as per usual, because a cube is effectively a rectangular prism that has been shortened, okay, so that it becomes all four sides are equal. And if we call this S for side, and we call this S for side, then do you agree the area of this first block, the area of the first block, the area of the first block is equal to side times side squared. But how many of those blocks do we have? Let's go through it again. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So therefore this becomes, sorry, so then this becomes six times side times side, which is 6s squared, and then obviously it would be units squared. Very easy, right? Let's do the next one. The triangular prism, okay, now the triangular prism is a prism that has got one side that is a triangle. So this here is a triangle, 
that there is a rectangle this bottom is also a rectangle and this side here is a rectangle and it's pretty easy to see if we look at our net where if you look over here this bit here is rectangle one which is actually the base there that line there matches that and the five centimeters matches that so this is the base then this line here is rectangle two which is this one here and then we've got rectangle three which is the one that's behind the nine centimeters and you've got your two triangular sides now you can see that we've got three rectangles and two triangles so this time our area our total surface area is going to equal to the area of rectangle one plus the area of rectangle two plus the area of rectangle three plus two times the area of the triangle because these two triangles are the same size so let's work this out it's going to be the first rectangle is and what is the area of a rectangle it's just length times breadth so it's going to be five times eight plus this one is going to be five times ten five times ten plus this one is going to be five times nine five times nine plus and then the area of a triangle now remember that the area of a triangle let me write it down here the area of a triangle is equal to half times the perpendicular base a height times the base so it's a half base times height as far as you guys are concerned half base times height so therefore it's going to be a half times the base which in this case is eight times the height which is nine and remember we said that we're going to multiply this by two because we've got two of them right so let's work that out five times eight is forty plus five times ten is fifty five times nine is forty five plus two cancels of that and eight times nine is seventy two so if we work that out we've got two and five is seven uh, let's do four and four is eight eight and seven is fifteen so it becomes two hundred and seven in this case it's centimeters so it is centimeters squared now grade elevens you'll notice that I'm not giving you like a rule like a triangular prism is LB1 L1 B1 plus L2 B2 plus L3 B3 plus two half whatever whatever what because you need to start understanding that you need to try and visualize what the net's going to be and work it out for yourself for the simple reason that they could give you any funny shape and you need to break it down into your base shapes which you should know the areas of and then work out the total surface area from there right cylinder cylinders different after having said that we can give you a basic rule about the cylinder which is quite nice now what you, if you I don't know if you remember this but what we said was if you take your cylinder and you break it up do you see that that top bit there is a circle and the top bottom bit there is a circle so we've got our two circles here but if we take our cylinder and we cut it down say for example the line here and we cut along here and we cut along there and we open it up this bit here the sides of your cylinder becomes a rectangle where the height is obviously just the height of the cylinder but the length of this is actually the circumference of the circle it's actually the circumference of the circle so that means that as it's written here this length here is the circumference of the circle which is 2 pi r so in this case quite nicely every cylinder you are given if it has both a top and a bottom okay your total surface area your total surface area is going to be two times the circles plus one rectangle plus the rectangle which is its sides okay now circles the area of a circle I'm hoping you know is pi r squared so let me write it down here the area of a circle equals pi r squared and remember that the circumference the circumference again something you should know 
is 2 pi r. So therefore the total surface area is 2 times the circles, which is going to be 2 times pi r squared, plus the area of the rectangle, which is going to be this length here, which we said was the area, I mean was the circumference of the circle. So this is going to be 2 pi r times by the height. So I said that this is true for any cylinder which has got both the top, in other words it's a closed cylinder, it's a closed cylinder. The minute they take this lid off, if they say it's just open, in other words if it's like the equivalent of a can, then remember that your total surface area would be only one circle, just the one at the bottom. Right, let's have a look at a square pyramid. Now a square pyramid is something that is made up of a square base and then it's got four triangles. It's got the square base and four triangles. So if we had to look at the total surface area here, we've got its base plus four triangles. Okay, now if we had to break this up into its net, and I'm going to try and do this for you, you would have basically your square base and then you'd have a triangle that goes out like this, triangle that goes out like this, triangle that goes out like that, and a triangle that goes out like that. Right. So do you see that that there is the base of this which has got a length of A? And this thing here which is called S because it's a slant height, it means it's the height at the slant, would be the perpendicular height of each of these triangles. So that makes it nice and easy because then what do we've got? We've got this base which is square, so it's going to be A squared plus 4 times, and what is the area of a triangle? It is a half times your base, which in this case is A, times S, because S is your slant height, which becomes A squared plus 4 times a half is 2 AS. And that there is the total surface area of a square pyramid, and remember that's still in units squared. Right, triangular prism. Triangular prism works exactly the same as the square pr pyramid in the sense that we've got a base, got a base, and we've got four triangles, one, two, actually we've got three triangles, one, two, three. Okay, so if we had to try, and I'm, when I say try, I mean because I'm very bad at drawing, I'm going to try and draw the net for this. This here is the base, then we've got a triangle that comes out like this, we've got a triangle that comes out like that, and we've got a triangle that comes out like this. Okay, now since this triangle is actually supposed to be an equilateral triangle, all of these sides are supposed to be equal. Okay, and therefore these triangles, although my drawing doesn't look like it, are going to be the same size as well. So what do you see here? You see that they've given us HB there. So that is the height of the base. That's HB. And do you see that, yeah, they've given us this 12 centimeters. That 12 centimeters is the slant height of my triangular sides. Okay, so let's have a look at this. The total surface area, therefore, is going to be the area of the base plus three times the triangles, area of the triangles. Okay, the base in this case happens to be a triangle, so it's going to be a half times, in this case it's eight, okay, times, and I'm just going to call this, instead I'm going to call it an S, so it's going to be half times by S times by HB, the height of the base, plus three times the area of the triangles that make up the size of this. And that would be um, a half times, in this case it's S, times by the slant height. So if the slant height I'm going to give the symbol HS, because you're going to see that quite often, HS, which means slant height. So if we simplify this, it becomes a half times S 
times HB plus 3 over 2 times S times H slant height and that's units squared. So grade 11's again, all I'm asking you to do is know the basics that the area of a triangle is a half base sums height and if you've got a slanted triangle it's a half base sums slanted height and then work out the net for yourself like I've done here. It doesn't matter if you're not an artist, you've seen my drawings, okay, you just need to work it out so that you can work out what the total surface area is. Right, let's look at a right cone. Now unfortunately the right cone is a bit tricky and I personally would say to you learn this one because they don't give it to you in your formula sheet and if they expect you to try and work out the total surface area it is not obvious. So the total surface area of this is going to be the area of the base which is a circle. So that's easy, that's pi r squared. But the area of the walls of a right cone it's a half times 2 pi r h S. So it's a half times 2 pi r is the circumference times its slant height, okay, which then obviously becomes pi r squared plus 2 cancels and then it becomes pi r h s. So I would learn that grade 11's because it is not an obvious one and another one that's not obvious is the surface area of a sphere which is 4 pi r squared where r is the radius of the sphere and then it's just 4 pi r squared and that grade 11's is all your measurements for your total surface area please go and practice those and do the assessment at the end of the section have a good day mm -hmm.